There are smaller or sub landing pages for dealing with characters and journals like we have mentioned here. And you can also find those in the landing pages scenes. As of April 2023, these LP blank characters, etc., are in the remastered section. After this month, they're going to be in the configurable landing pages folder. But we're going to bring in the LP blank characters and LP blank journals and walk through how to customize those. For these, I don't think you need to have the show and navigation. You, of course, are welcome to do so if you want to have that separate. But to me, that kind of defeats the purpose of having the single unified landing page like we do here. I am going to change the name of these to be LP demo characters and LP demo journals. I accidentally brought in a second one, so I'll remove that. And obviously, when you are creating your own landing pages, you'll want to change that to something descriptive for your game or something unique so that you don't have multiple extras. We're going to move those right there. For the characters, we need to edit these uh, triggers. So we're going to go into our tile tool. For the characters page, we're going to navigate to the scene, and then we need to set up teleportation here. To do that, we're going to use our tile controls and double click this transparent tile. Navigating to triggers, this is where Monk's active tile triggers information is stored. The setup tab is just the conditions for triggering the tile, so we don't need to make any changes there. Then under actions, you can see there's these three landings. The hover landings are controlling the highlights for these arrows, so we don't need to make any changes there. This run macro is what we're actually using to switch scenes. So you can see that this is pointing to the BailiWiki Nuts and Bolts compendium. So you don't have to have this macro imported. It'll work right out of the box. And in fact, I would highly recommend that you don't change this to a macro in your world. That way, if we push an update to that macro, it's automatically taken care of. You can see there's a lot of information in the args field. There's basically three sets of quotations, and this is sending three pieces of information to the macro so that it can fire properly. The first piece of information is the name of the scene that we're teleporting to. So I'm going to call this LP demo, which matches this main landing page that we're using. You can also open up configure and copy, then paste in order to make sure you have the right name. Since this is going off of name, if you have multiple scenes named LP demo, it will teleport you to a random one rather than a specific one. So keep that in mind and make sure you're naming things unique if you want to have a repeatable teleportation. The next two pieces are both for scene transitions. If you're not using scene transitions, you can leave this information in. It's not going to affect the macro or cause you any issues. It's just something you can do to customize. So within this, you can change the image that will be displayed when you do a scene transition. You can copy and paste this from a tile, or you can just change the file extension if you know an image you're looking for. For example, you can open up your tile browser and navigate into the BailiWiki landing pages module and look at the different file types and file names and then just change it to one of those. Or you can leave it the clockwork door placeholder and then finally, there is a quote that you can change. This is a pretty generic quote about adventure. You can change it to something more topical to your adventure. Whenever you finished making your changes, click update and update the tile. Now to test that, you need to be on your token controls. And this is also important as your players will need to be on their token controls to use the landing pages. If they're on like their drawing tools or something like that, these items won't work. Then when we click on main menu, it plays a scene transition with the artwork we chose and the quote that we chose and it returns us to the main menu. Of course, we can click on characters to come back here yet again. For the realm piece, it's going to be the same process as with the main menu. So under triggers and actions, you will edit the run macro 
and you'll configure the name of the scene you want to go to, and then the image you want to display and quote you want to display if you're using scene transitions. We're going to go to this demo map once again. So I'm going to control C that and then control V that, just copying and pasting it in so I'm not making any mistakes and update the tile. And this then brings me to that map that we were going to. If you want to change the labels for any of these, they can all be edited independently of the tile. They're just text, so you can say instead of main menu, you can say home or something like that. Or instead of realm, you can put in map of region or whatever you would like, and you can move things around or reconfigure it. So the next phase is to customize all these character portraits. The first thing you probably want to do is change the image here. So you can just select with the file browser and change it to anything that you want. Note that this mystery man is in the core data. So when you open this up, it might say core data. Just make sure you switch it to user data so that you can see the different information that you want. Since we recently opened the tiles and background section, that's where this is going to be. Once you found the image that you like, you can update the tile in order to save it, or you can go ahead and move on to the trigger section where we're covering the monk's active child triggers yet again. This one is very simple. We have open an actor sheet for the triggering player. All you're going to do is go here and for the select entity, that's where you're gonna choose the actor. So make sure you're in your actors directory and then you're gonna use this select an entity and you're gonna just click on the character sheet you want to be opened. So I'm picking a bandit. You'll note that I have permission viewer. So if I were to edit the ownership here and make it so that someone's an owner and I can see that they own this bandit captain, you'll note that the bandit isn't owned by anyone. So these will not respect um, ownership. If there's things that are hidden on the sheet, it still won't be there. For example, they won't have access to secret pieces, but you don't have to have someone assigned as an owner. That might be useful depending on the kinds of information you like to store on character sheets. So we can update that. And then now when we click on the tile, it's gonna open up the actor sheet that we want. Obviously you'd probably use the name of this character for that sheet, but you get the idea. And then you wanna change the text here from character one player to, you know, maybe this person named Brock, and they're played by Zephyr. And then you would repeat this process with the other actors. So once again, we'll open this up and we will select some images. So we've selected our image, then we go to triggers and we don't need to change anything in setup, so we can go directly to actions. And we're just going to select O oh, Lich. And then update the tile. Now the tile is working, and we'll change our label. And on click, it's going to open up this character sheet. So that's how we take care of our characters. After we've customized our characters, we'll want to customize our journals as well. So the first thing to do is to update the navigation buttons. And just like before, we're in our triggers, actions, and editing this run macro action. And we're going to set our main menu name and our world map name. So that now these work for navigation. Then it's time to actually update the journals. First, you can update the image if you so desire, or you can just leave it as a book. You can also tint this to different colors if you want different colors to represent your different players. Maybe something that corresponds with their in-game color or their cursor color. It's up to you. But then in terms of triggers, this is just opening a journal. You can see I already went through and I selected one, but you're going to use the select entity. 
and that's how you can pick the specific journal entry, and then you can select the page and subsections as you desire. There's also an option for checking permission, so if you only want someone to be able to open their own journal, you can do that, and another tick box for using Monk's Enhanced Journal for the specific types of pages rather than viewing it as a standard journal. Once you have that, then it's as simple as using your token tools to click on it and open up the journal. You can then repeat this process and you can rename things. And again, these are just texts, so you can say Gothic Castle. And then these templates are all ready for you to use. You can cycle between them and the main menu with that navigation we set up. And you can open and close these specific journal entries. We'll note that this has a blank background. So if you want to adjust the background, you can just bring one in. For example, in the landing pages module, under tiles and backgrounds, there are a variety of different backgrounds to choose from. I recommend setting the asset grid size to just something large. Occasionally, if the image is too big for the bounding box of the scene, the tile won't come in. So I can demonstrate that now. You'll see that I'm trying to drag this out and it will show up in my preview, but it doesn't always drag out. So if you set this to a very large number, you'll have the tile come in and you can then adjust the size of this. When you're ready, you can send it to the background. Now, some of this blurring is not precise. You can adjust this kind of backlighting here, this back fade, to a color that is closer to the image. And you can play with those aspects. If you need to grab the background tile for some reason, you may need to move this back fade out of the way. And you may want to try a larger size. A larger size typically makes this blend a lot cleaner. So that you can see there's not a harsh edge over on this side. Again, we can turn this back to black or gray and the effect is much the same. And you can't see the edge nearly as much when you have a larger image here that kind of bleeds into the space. And so that is how you set up the templates for journals and characters. There is another type of landing page template, and that is going to be complex. There's both a blank complex and an example using the radiant forest. And navigating to it, you can see it looks a little bit differently. How this one works is if you click on something like characters, it's going to have these things appear. It is a little cluttered for a GM, because things are stacked on top of each other, but as a player, you only see the things that are currently revealed. And there's an example of a custom menu item here. So they're going to hide and show respectively. And you will just customize this just like all of the other pieces. And you'll notice that I've grabbed the journal here. So you may have to move things over in order to be able to grab what you want when you customize this. This can be customized in the same way as the journal pages and the character pages. 